a, a, a little slide presentation. It needs to be darker in here, doesn't it? <laughs> but we don't quite know what to do. Anyway, we're going to talk about mushrooms in the wild. I am in no way an expert. I've been eating wild mushrooms for 40 years, and I'm still alive, so that makes me, you know, at least credible when I talk about mushrooms. So, and Jesse has is recently into shrooming, and he has tried a lot more mushrooms than I ever would, and he's looking really healthy. <laughs> so, between the two of us, we're going to try and tell you about some. Now, Grace has told me which side of this to push. Left side. Here. Just the side of it? No, yeah. turn it over. There. There? Yeah, the left arrow. Try it here. Point it at the computer. Point it at the monitor. Not at the screen. Point it over here. Oh. <laughs> mushrooms by their botanical names. You know, that little red mushroom with the, with the white things on top, it's not gonna, not gonna give the emergency room folks that much information. Um, so we're looking at what is a really typical true mushroom. It has a cap. This understructure in the muscaria is in the amanita in gills. Other mushrooms have different things under this fleshy part here. The amanita comes with a universal veil. That means in its infancy, a veil encompasses this whole structure from the vulva up to the cap. And as it begins to grow and come apart, various things happen to it. Parts of the veil are left up on top on some mushrooms. There is a ring or an annulus around the stalk where it is pulled away from here. And this is the vulva, and it grows down into the ground. The little stringy things that you see at the bottom is the spawn or the mycelium. And that is the, that's the plant. Mushrooms are plants, they're just not green plants. But the plant part is beneath the ground and you don't ever see it, but it's always there. And when a spore drops into a place that's favorable for it, then the, the little spawn or mycelium begins to branch out from that to create a new mushroom plant. And it always goes away from where the spore dropped. So you will find mushrooms close perhaps to where you found them last year always moving out. The bulb at the base of the stalk identifies the um, uh, part that is attached to the veil. In another mushroom, the boletes, you will find this is what looks like a sponge under here, but it's actually a, a network of closely packed tubes. And that's where the spores are produced. In here, they're produced on the outside of the gills. And on the boletes, they're produced up inside in the tubes. 
um, our our biology teacher said she always learned to thump a mushroom before you picked it to scatter the spores. And one, one of my books said, if you find a mushroom that's a favorite and it's just over the hill, what are you supposed to do? Stomp the heck out of it and come back next year. <laughs> Both of those are partially true. But the spores are very, very fine. They're air carried, they drop on the ground, they're gonna find a place. Uh, and so you, you can either help or hurt them by stomping them or thumping. They're like, mushrooms are like apples, except with apples you see the tree. With mushrooms, you never see the plant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're gonna talk a little bit, Jesse, you got anything? Okay, you got, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about edible mushrooms. That's what most people are interested in. And mushrooms run the gamut from deadly poison to absolutely delicious. And in between, there are all kinds of mushrooms that are not particularly significant one way or the other. There are some mushrooms that will make you sick. There are some mushrooms that will be absolutely delicious. There are some mushrooms that don't taste very good at all. So there's, there's a broad spectrum of mushrooms and you just need to be able to identify what you have found, okay? These are chanterelles. Everybody familiar with chanterelles? Mm -hmm. It is a, it's an absolutely delicious mushroom. It's one of the easiest to identify. They have, oh, pictures. Okay. a chanterelle is kind of an egg yolk color if it's a really healthy egg yolk. And it has deep current gills. That means they start up under the cap of the mushroom and they run down the stem. And they're not gills as we recognize them on amanitas. They just go down the stems and it's one of the best ways to identify. You can see them here, not really well. But this went from the ground, to my counter, to my pond. <laughs> One thing about eating mushrooms in the wild, you want to take a very small bite the first time. Now Jesse just eats it. <laughs> but you never know whether you're going to have a sensitivity to something or not. Some, some people are allergic to chocolate. So, um, you need to find out if you are sensitive to whatever kind of mushroom you're eating. And that's by starting out with small bites and then building up. Don't ever just eat the whole pot full at one sitting if you've never had it before. These are more chanterelles growing in different places. This is growing in grass up at the top of my hill. My mother used to run over them with the lawnmower and she scattered them all the way to hill and gone. And I, I think that's why we've got so many chanterelles up on the hill now, because mother just mowed them down. Um, this one in the basket down here, number three, that is a 10 inch basket. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the size of that, that front chanterelle in it. Sometimes they're very, very big and sometimes they're little bitty things, but they're good. Over here is another chanterelle, it's a cinnabar. It's small, it rarely gets to be much bigger than an inch in diameter, and it is a beautiful cinnabar red, red orange. And they're delicious and they're pretty to put into things. Down here, in my first mushroom book, they call this the trumpet of death. Wow, how's that for inviting? Uh, Horn of Plenty is another one, but it's a, it's a velvety purple black mushroom. It's a chanterelle, and it's absolutely delicious if you're lucky enough to find them somewhere. Any questions about chanterelles? The chanterelles is a group of mushrooms, not one particular mushroom. Right, it's a group, it's a category. It's like first names and last names. Yes. Okay. 
So it's a Chanterellus, Chanterellus, Cinnabar, Chanterellus, Horn of Plenty. Um, it's got another name. Gotcha. Okay. But that's the if you if you learn the botanical name for them, then you can tell somebody about them so that they have a better chance of understanding what you're talking about. Mm -hmm.